Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, early risers, and the Garfields of the world who really hate Mondays. Hi ho! Hi ho! That is right. It is a Monday morning, bright and early. So, what did we take from this weekend? The NFL playoff started. Woohoo! Yes. And 28 days from now, or yesterday, 28 days from now, I guess we'll be talking about the new Super Bowl champion. Who will it not be? The New England Patriots. The dynasty, and you're missing the fact I'm doing air quotes, the dynasty is over. Tom Brady's skills have sank faster than the Titanic ever thought about. He's been overthrowing receivers. He's just got to get a walker to get out of the pocket. He's past his prime. He's, his accuracy has dropped. He's, he's done. And the beauty of it is, oh, he don't know if he wants to play or not. He'll do a Troy Aikman. You watch. He will uh, have feelers out for other teams, but when no other team wants to spend, you know, $25 million for a 42-year-old, he's going to say, I'm going to go ahead and retire. I've done enough. Now, when the Patriots don't renew your contract and no one else will hire you, that's not retirement. That's unemployment. I mean, I remember... Troy Aikman did it. Well, because of the concussions. Now, because nobody would give you a job, Troy. Same way with Drew or old Tom. Uh, the beauty of it is, if that was his last game, his career ends with a pick six as his last throw. How awesome is that? Taken out of the playoffs with a pick six. Now, the one game that did bother me was the Texans and the Bills. First of all, I was rooting for the Bills because I would have loved for a Buffalo-Minnesota Super Bowl, not because I'm a big fan of either of those teams, but those teams combined have eight Super Bowl losses with zero wins. I think that would have been awesome to have 8 no, you know, one franchise finally getting over the hump, but Buffalo kind of got screwed. Now, uh, there was a score, there was a kickoff, the guy for Texans catches it in the end zone and just kind of tosses the ball over to the ref. The ref jumps back. Buffalo sees it, scoops it up, ref to this touchdown. Now, what's funny was when uh, they show it live, the guy catches the ball, tosses it over the ref, and the cameras change. And I told my wife, I said, he never downed that ball. I said, that's a live ball. You can't call fair catch. And uh, the ref saw it the exact same way. He said, he never, he never did anything. He just tossed the ball over. So... He called a touchdown. The problem is that all the refs got together. Then you had the announcers of Booger McFarland who, oh, what is ESPN thinking? How many tweets do they have to read every week of people just ragging on this guy before they ditch him? I hope this was a one-and-done experiment. But anyway, the announcers are going, no, 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 that's just ticky-tack. No, that's the rules. The dude, all you had to do is just reach down Put your knee on the ground. That's it. But uh, they went back. Finally, all the refs got together and said, well, he gave himself up. No, he didn't. He did nothing. That, I'm sorry, man, but Buffalo got screwed on that. That was a live ball. If you're going to half-ass it, I ain't really. What's the difference between a receiver catching it on the sideline, getting one foot in, and instead of tipping toes, said, well, for my own safety, I went ahead and put that foot out in front of me out of bounds, but I could have caught it. 
Go ahead. I, I gave myself up at that point. Okay, that's a catch. I mean, follow the rules. It's that simple. But, uh, anyway, one play shouldn't determine a game, but that would have changed the score. It would have changed how the game was played. Now, one game did change the score, or one play did change a game, and that was the Minnesota uh, New Orleans game. Now, two years ago, these two teams played, and they had the Minnesota Miracle. Seconds left, uh, deep throw, Minnesota receiver jumps up, catches it, and all of the defenders just run into each other, fall down. The receiver turns around and sees there's nobody between him and the end zone and scores the Minnesota Miracle. Which they need to come up with better names because that's a takeoff for the Music City Miracle. I mean, get your own. But anyway, so they lost the Minnesota last second two years ago. Last year, they're playing the Rams. The uh, Saints are going down to score. Uh, there's a pass, and the Rams defender just runs over the top of the receiver. It's the most blatant pass in the you've ever seen in your life. And they didn't get called. It was so bad that the NFL on the offseason changed the rule and basically did something said they would never do. And that was allowed for pass interference to be reviewable by a challenge. Now, they never wanted these penalties to be reviewable. Basically, they didn't want the refs to be second-guessed. But now you can you can challenge whether or not pass interference happened with or without a flag, which means if you think they got interfered with you don't, and the ref didn't call a flag, you can challenge that. Okay, here's the thing. In overtime of that Saints-Viking game, it was the first drive of the Saint or the uh, Vikings. They go down the field, they throw a touchdown, and the wide receiver pushed off. Since it was overtime, as soon as he catches that ball, they call a touchdown, game over. But they're like, oh, they're going to review this. It was passing off. And they showed it, the replay, a couple times. It couldn't have been, there's a dog about to run out here. It couldn't have been seconds. It wasn't minutes, it was seconds. Then they said, nope, game's over. No way was that reviewed. They were not going to change that because that ended the game. They literally changed the rules because of what happened last year to the Saints. They said, it's a big game changing during the playoffs. We need to be able to review that to make sure you got it right. The very next year, you had the opportunity to show the world that you were serious about getting it right and you didn't. Now, I like Drew Brees. I think he's one of the greatest quarterbacks ever, and I think he's the most underappreciated quarterback ever. I mean, here's the guy that holds basically every passing record there is, and he uh, he got drummed out of San Diego for Phillip Rivers. I mean, geez. But... So I was rooting. I mean, I like the Saints. I, I honestly, I told my wife, I said, I hope whoever wins that game wins the Super Bowl. Because I like the Vikings. I like what they're doing. And I like the Saints. So either one of those I've been happy with. But it's just the Saints got screwed. Because it was pass interference. It's been shown over and over. That, that wide receiver pushed off, changed that defender's route. You see his head snap back. It should have been called should have been played and let the chips fall they made. I mean, to, to really, to create a rule just for that situation and then not enforce it, NFL just let it down. Let down every fan that thought maybe they're dedicated to getting it right. No. The other games, the uh, uh, Philadelphia and Seattle, didn't have a dog in a fight. I don't think either team. I don't think either team really had a legitimate shot at the Super Bowl. Seattle, blah blah blah. You're on the losing streak. You're not that impressive. You haven't impressed me all year. You. Uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. And, and Philadelphia. 
Philadelphia, you're in there by default because somebody had to win that division. I mean, you're in the weakest division, and they no doubt that that is the weakest division, and that includes the AFC North that has Bengals and Browns in it. But that NFC East, the jokes. Speaking of NFC East, when they redesignated the uh, di divisions in NFL, because teams had moved around and it just and the AFC North went from having uh, four teams, while everybody else having five, to suddenly they had six because of teams coming in. So they rearranged it. I mean, it didn't make sense for Houston and you know, Pittsburgh to be in the same division. They're not even close. So anyway, they did it geographically. Some things I'm thinking, well, why didn't they put this to the only one that it's even questionable is how the world is Dallas and the NFC East. They're in there with Washington, Philadelphia, and New York. All of these teams are what? A couple hours drive from each other? Except for Dallas. They're halfway across the country. And you got Carolina right down the road that could have been on you. I mean, for that matter, you could have switched Baltimore and put them back in the, uh, or put them in the NFC, but had been a little much. But Carolina's right there. How is that not? How are they in the South, but Dallas isn't? Because, oh, no, well, these are classical matchups. Everybody wants to see the old Redskins. Nobody cares. Dallas hasn't been relevant since 1996. All right? Let it go. Stop giving them preferential treatment. And if you don't think they do, give Cal uh, Dallas preferential treatment. You are mistaken. Watch a Dallas Cowboy game. And I don't care. Uh, let's see. New England. New England prime example. If New England played Dallas, you would hear Brady, Brady, Brady. Oh, Sony Michelle. That was caught by uh, Edelman. Always their last name. That's how everybody is referred to in the NFL. I don't care who you are. I mean, Troy Palomalu. They could have said Troy, but no, Palomalu. So it ain't like they're doing it for brevity. Now, you watch a Dallas game, and it's always Dak and uh, Zeke. Not even his name, Zeke. Give him a uh, nickname, Zeke. Not Ezekiel, not Elliot and Prescott. It's Dak and Zeke every single time. Like they're buddies. Like they are seriously trying to make them a household name on a crappy team because they're Oh, it's Dallas. They sell a lot of tickets. They sell... No, they sell a lot of merchandise. So they're trying to make these people household names. Those two are the only one that's done like that. I mean, Tom Brady's been around for 20 years. The guy's won six Super Bowls. Okay, you don't say, Tom goes back to pass. No, Brady goes back to pass. But it'll always be Dak. Let it go. Cowboys aren't relevant. Stop trying to make it that way. Get on that. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, the Eagles and uh, Seahawks game. Clowney, the defensive player for. Did a. It was, was kind of late shot. And he went helmet to helmet to it with the diving quarterback. Ended up tape, you know, hit the quarterback in the back of the head, the crown of his helmet. Took him out of the game. And they should kind of show he has a history of doing that. I mean, not as bad as, you know, Burfage for the Bengals, but still pretty bad. But nothing was called about it. And I mean, it's kind of, it was kind of a bang-bang play, but it's one of those things where you kind of look at the history of the player. That needs to be addressed offseason. The other game was, um, who was the other game? We had the, uh, oh, Tennessee and New England. Yeah. I've already addressed that. That game, I mean, Brady's skills have gone. Tennessee, Tennessee, who got in 
really by default another one that got in by default because everybody else around them was like, nah, we don't want to go. So Tennessee got in. And again, Tennessee kind of thrives in a division where, yeah, not really that tough. So the fact they got in, they everyone figured they were one and done, especially if they were the, playing the defending Super Bowl champion. The Patriots haven't played in the wild card game in X number of years. You figured that was going to be a quick. 13 points. They held the Patriots to 13 points, zero in the first half or in the second half. Um, yeah. The uh, Titans are not that good that they just shut them down. The Patriots is not who you think they are. I mean, all these years that they hadn't played in the AFC East, you've been lucky to get three Super Bowls. Two, probably, the most. But I think the dynasty is done. And I, and what, don't think it annoyed me about it, and I know I'm doing it too, but I talk about everything. I turned it on as, last night after the games. You know, they're doing the wrap-up. Doing the wrap-up of the Minnesota game, or the um, Seattle... Philadelphia game, the late game. They've been the wrap up that. Really, all they're talking about is Brady. My wife even walks through this and are they still talking about him? Then turned on this morning to Mike and Mike, or no longer Mike and Mike, uh, Golick and Wingo. All they're talking about. Four games, all you got to talk about is one guy. All right, let's see. I know I got a couple meetings today. This week is going to be a busy week. We have a couple of different trainings to do. We're going to a new computer system. Uh, we've got a couple of evaluations I've got to talk to you about. Uh, hiring a couple, I've got a couple of applications i got to go through, interview. Uh, and I, I think it's going to be lip service. I know who I'm hiring. Unless she just flat out refuses the job, you know, the pay's not there, whatever the situation. But, uh, Lease. Like I said, I, I, I'm gonna offer. I know who I'm gonna offer to. Put it like that. All right, let's see. The rest of this week, like I said, training a couple different days. We have some scheduling issues because of that. People coming in and whatnot. Oh man, I think they actually had one. A one of their meetings, their first meetings was this morning. Uh, they're having about 15 of them over the next week and a half. I wanted to go to one, and I think that's one this morning. I believe I just missed it, but they have one this afternoon. But Ah, crap. I forgot about that. Ah, right, anyway. Busy week. Good weekend. Busy week ahead. Yeah, it's supposed to get up in the upper 50s, I think, man. Tell you, bring that global warming on. I'd like to get out and get on the bike. We'll see. All right. Till next time. I promise I'll try to do better. Hey, Peter Parker.